I'm putting a hair dryer in a cardboard box to see if it will catch fire. It took me three attempts and required me to bypass two different safeties to get it to burn anything. If you saw my other two hair dryer videos, you'll remember this is the same $5 Goodwill hair dryer that I've dropped in a bucket of water while running to see what would happen. This thing is so cheap, not just Goodwill used cheap, but also brand cheap. Everything about it is cheap, but at the end of the day, it's way more durable than I ever expected. So stay tuned as I throw it in a cardboard box until it fails, take it apart and see what happened, and then do it again until I get smoke and fire and the hair dryer finally gives up as unrepairable. All right, attempt number one, we're gonna take the hair dryer as is with the two safeties, and I'm going to simply just put it here in the box. I have two thermal probes on there just to be able to look at temperatures. We're gonna set it to three to high heat and uh, turn the fan on to max. And we're gonna drop it in the box here. Going one-handed here, so just give me a few seconds here while I get this straightened out. And um, we get it sealed into this box. It is running, so definitely not a scenario that you want to be running your hair dryer in in a cardboard box with some paper in it at the bottom on maximum heat. So I'm running about 200 degrees Fahrenheit. My other probe's a little wonky, so we'll just have to go with it until I get that fixed. But I have one probe in there showing about 200 degrees. And uh, we're just going to run it out and see what happens. Side of the box is warm to the touch. Definitely feel a little bit of heat coming out the top, but nothing Nothing too extreme, nothing to indicate that a fire is ever going to start here. So, interesting. Still got problems with my probe, but we're sitting at 185 degrees, 190, which is not what I expected at all. So let's let this run a little bit longer and see what happens here. But I, did, I expected this thing to just get hotter and hotter and hotter and then just shut down. But it's not shutting down. It just keeps running. So I'm beginning to think that the uh, that little thermal sensor we had from the last video um, that we see in there, that little like read relay is just cycling on and off and keeping it at a constant no more than 200. So that's kind of a disappointment. I expected it to just cut out and shut the power off altogether, but it looks like it just cuts the heat off, cools down a little, turns the heat back on. I mean. We were up to 200 degrees and now we're down to 155, 156 degrees. So, hmm, that's what I have to say here. But we'll just keep running it out a little more and uh, see what happens here. I'm just gonna wiggle the wires on my probe here in the background, so just Kind of stay tuned. It's on the second lead. The first lead's working at 100%, the one that was reading 200 degrees. But when I switch over to the, the, the secondary one, it's a little bit cooler, but not much is going on in the box, so plenty of time. Right. But that did it. So when I push this button, you can see, if you look real carefully, you can see a T1 and a T2 for both probes, and they're right around the 160s. But yeah, this is kind of a buzzkill, isn't it? Not very exciting YouTube at all. So I'm just gonna speed this up a little bit to get past this part so we can unbox it, take a look at what's going on in there, and uh, then we'll go take it into the shop and take it apart, and uh, we'll put some bypasses on those safety devices, see what happens then. We're gonna get this thing to burn. So miracle time lapse. This thing is definitely at an equilibrium here. It's not getting hotter, it's not getting colder. It is heating. I mean, it's keeping it a constant 160 degrees on that one probe in the box, um, which is just crazy. I mean, I'm running right now. I put my hand in it. It's not crazy hot in there. I thought this thing would be scorching hot, or at least it would just shut off from thermal thermal overload on that little uh, reed switch there. But uh, that reed switch cuts out way before the other thermal fuse, if you look at the other videos there. So we're going to take it out of the box, turn it down, cool it down take it apart and show you how I'm going to do the bypass here on this next test. So test number one is a fail. We did not get anything to happen exciting at all. All right, so I'll just crack this open. I'm getting really good at it. So we're just going to speed through this little section here while that's coming out. But here's the interesting part. 
cracking it open, take a look at this. That wire is dangling. And that wire was fully soldered in before. So this wire, the solder, actually looks like it melted off. So I think that's a combination of thermal properties in there being right on the margin, along with the wires being super thin and, and causing a lot of heat in that connection. All right, so I'm going to solder that wire back on uh, for good measure here. Obviously, we can't continue the experiment if uh, the hairdryer is still broken. Give me a few seconds here while I get this going. Not going to do anything fancy. Just going to, gonna, I'll do better than a glob because my soldering skills are actually really, really sharp uh, in terms of uh, producing really clean solder joints. As you can see that's got a nice joint to it now it's all back in went through the hole okay so i'm going to just test out the thermal read switch here just to kind of prove out that it's uh doing what i think it's doing um, it's actually i call it a thermal read switch but it's actually called a normally closed hair dryer temperature control switch amt thermal protector well that's a mouthful huh but as you can see i'm gaining 1.2 ohms across the switch so i know i'm in the right zone that's the thing that's cycling on and off. It gets hot, it opens up, doesn't allow current to flow to the heating coils. The fan continues to blow. All right, so the plan here is to solder a bypass um, across that reed switch with a piece of uh, 12 gauge, 14 gauge solid copper or stranded copper wire here. So sorry I'm off screen a little bit here, but I'm just making the jumper right now. And so that'll keep it from cycling on and off. And then we'll get to see what happens. Okay, score that just fits right in the hole um, of that little uh, rivet that fits through that board. We talked about that in the last video as well. So just give me a second here and get some solder on that. All right, I'll just kind of go between the heating coils here. Uh, the soldering, the heat from the soldering iron is not going to heat hurt the heating coils. Sorry, it's a little bit out of view there. Okay, success, nice and tight. It's great, get that yellow wire out of the way. Okay, now we're ready to put the jumper on the other pass of that switch. So we're bypassing the switch altogether. So current will flow through that black wire. And if it turns on and off the switch underneath it, it won't matter because the current flow will be through the black wire. Little bit of flux that'll make that a little bit easier all right we are done we have bypassed it and uh, I'll just put it back together and I'll see you out at the box. Okay, attempt number two. Missing one of its critical safeties. There's still one in there, so it'll be interesting to see what happens. It gets more exciting the further we go. All right, it's on high temperature, high fan. It's unable to thermal cycle itself. Let's see how long it takes for it to cook itself. Does it catch fire? Brought my thermal probe out too. My uh, infrared thermal probe. So I could check on things on the outside. 193, we've seen that temperature before. 203, that's good. 208, oh boy, 215, 220. All right, these are temperatures we haven't seen before. So we've definitely bypassed the thermal probe. Outside of the box, 146, 160 I saw there briefly. 240, oh boy. Now it does have another safety, so it might just cut out all the way with that other thermal fuse, and then we'll go bypass that real quick. Oh, that doesn't sound good at all. Totally changed sounds. Yeah, 284. I don't know what the max was here. I probably should have put the max setting on, but I didn't. 
sitting at 205 on the up. Whoop. Just cut out. 305 degrees. Boof. This dryer, this hair dryer is no more. Let's take a look on the inside. Anything happened to it? Going one handed, so it's a little bit hard here. Oh, oh, wow. You see the front of that? It is completely melted. 303, 305, those are sort of the max temperatures I read up there at the top of it. Okay, wow. Yeah, look at that tip. Totally deformed from heat. 313 in that range. So definitely enough to melt the front of it. And look at the labels. The labels are all blackened on this. So it definitely got a lot more heat than it did before. But I'd put attempt number two as a fail at catching fire. All right, so we'll just give this a quick disassembly here. It's got that melted front cowling, burnt labels. Uh, let's just take a quick look inside and see what's going on. Okay, so this is inside. Taking a look, I see a bunch of uh, flakes on the inside. So it looks like that might be fan blade or something really bizarre. So it really did actually get a lot hotter um, on the inside of that than you would think. And this is not coming out very easily at all. So I'm gonna have to kind of wedge and push it, that front section out. There it goes. So yeah, that's all deformed around the front. It also took that little protective sleeve, if you look at the paper there. Kind of ripping it as I pull it out, but it doesn't really matter. But it used to just sort of uh, sit and stay in there. It was sort of taped into the innards, but the heat kind of detached it all as one unit now. Yeah, but looking at the rest of this, um, it looks fine. I mean, I don't see anything obvious other than uh, that thermal fuse right there, which is going to be blown. So we'll test that here. Okay, get the multimeter out. We'll uh, just kind of test that fuse, verify that it is actually blown. Yep, it is. Yeah, and here's a uh, little bit closer up of it, but that fuse that's kind of buried in there, um, that is a one-way fuse. It's a fuse fuse. So when it blows, it's done. So we're going to have to bypass that and then there'll be zero safeties left on this. So we'll duplicate what we did for the thermal switch, except this time we're just gonna use a red wire. We're gonna to try to get it into the studs. I had a little bit of problems that the, um, the wire wouldn't actually fit through the studs, so I soldered it towards the top. But other than that, uh, process is the same. So as you can see here, I've bypassed the thermal fuse, so all the current will flow through that red wire, very similar to what the reed switch is. So now we have a bypass on this side and a bypass on the other side uh, on that thermal reed switch. So uh, with that done, there is zero safeties left, so I'll see you outside at the box. So will this burn? Let's go ahead and turn it on and uh, see what's going on here. Oh, yeah, it's not sounding so hot. Definitely, I want to get this in the box quicker than slower, given the uh, the way it sounds. Tape it in there. It is running. Got my thermal probe. Let's come over here and take a look. See what's going on. Oh yeah, that fan does not sound good at all. 200 degrees. <laughs> that thing is sounding really, really bad. 112 on the outside of the box. It hasn't had a lot of time to cook, but the temperature is definitely going up. Not sure how long this thing's going to run for. Surprisingly cool on the outside. We've got some sunlight in here, so. Oh, I see smoke. I see smoke. Okay, we got something going on in there. But I don't have flames. Man, does that sound awful. Top's kind of bowed out. Maybe the tape's just giving out a little more than anything else. 
303, 304. Sounding pretty bad. Uh, this hair dryer has seen better days. It's been through a lot. It's been dunked in water. It's been overheated. It's partially melted. It has no safeties left. Oh, did you just hear that? It totally changed sound. It's like it's uh, maybe just running the fan at this point and all the heating coils turned off. It's 328, 329 in there. Yeah, it's, it's off. It died. Yeah, you can see smoke coming out of it. A little bit of smoke coming out of the box. So let's go ahead and, uh, oh yeah, we definitely got, uh, yeah, I can see smoke coming out the back side of the unit, coming out the front side of the unit. It's definitely more melted. Let me see what's in the box. Yep, that's definitely way, way more melted than it was before. Things smoking. Uh, I didn't get a big ball of fire like I was hoping for. That's what the hose in the background is for. So, you know, after I unplug it, put it out. Let's take a look in the box itself. Ah, uh, we got paper to burn, but not burn, burn. That's a little disappointing. I was hoping the whole thing would go up like a, like a Christmas tree. But, hey, I'm going to label that one as a success. We uh, killed the dryer. Okay, we'll just do a really super quick disassembly, see what's going on in there, what actually burnt on the inside. Uh, really melted here. Uh, Label is still burnt, but the front is, has seen better days. Uh, this this hair dryer is a goner. Uh, it's actually really amazing at how uh, resilient this is and how hard it was to actually get uh, anything to actually even burn. Okay, so it looks like that red wire uh, actually melted off and burnt on one side of it. So uh, if I had not used solder and it like been spot welded in, uh, that dryer might have run longer uh, and actually been able to start a fire in the box. But uh, it's too far gone now. And if you look at the black wire over the reed switch, even that was starting to melt. So the internals of this were getting super hot. All right, so that is a wrap. Please like and subscribe, and thanks for watching. And that was $5 well spent.